Alright, number 16. Let's see. Um, number 16 is G at F at X. So that's G of F of X. Let's start with function G. 3 over X plus 1. But I'm going to write 3 over parentheses plus 1. Okay. Now, for the parentheses, f of x goes inside the parentheses. But f of x is 2x plus 3. So I'm going to put 2x plus 3 in there. Now, that's going to make 3 over... Now, these parentheses are not really doing anything. This is... 2x plus 3 plus 1. So this makes 3 over 2x plus. Bye bye! 4. And this is the answer. The domain. I have a denominator that cannot be zero, so that means x cannot be, let's see, negative four over two. x cannot be negative two. Now, let me show you exactly where I got that from. This is how I got the domain. I know that the, the denominator, 2x plus 4, cannot be 0. So I'm just going to solve this. Subtracting 4 from both sides, that means 2x cannot be negative 4. All right, so now I'm just going to divide both sides by 2. That means x cannot be negative 2. And that's where I got that domain from. Okay, let's do number 18. Let's see, number 18, g of g of x. g of g of x. Okay, so function g is 3 over x plus 1. So I'm going to write 3 over parentheses plus 1. Now inside the parentheses is another function g, which is 3 over x plus 1. Okay, this could be a little tricky, so pay attention. Now, first of all, those parentheses are not really doing anything, so I think I will dispense with them. So, this is 3 over, and I've got 3 over x plus 1, plus 1. Now, watch this, because here's a trick that I can do anytime I have 1. 1 can be anything I want. 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 5 over 5. As long as it's the same thing twice. Let's see, so this is 3 over, and I've got 3 over x plus 1. Now, I need to convert this 1 into a fraction so that I can add it. But in order to add fractions, I need, I need the denominators to be alike. So I need this denominator to be x plus 1. Well, since the overall value needs to be 1, I need these two things to be the same. So x plus 1 over x plus 1 would be 1. Now the denominators are the same. 
since the denominators are the same, I can add those fractions together. So adding these two fractions, when you add fractions, you keep the like denominator. So I'm going to keep the x plus 1 here and here. Now the numerators need to be added. That means I'm going to have x plus 4. Hmm, where did that come from? Well, I'm just, if I'm going to add these numerators together, I'm really just combining like terms. So the 3 and the 1 got added, and that's where the 4 came from. Now watch this. To simplify this the rest of the way, look at it this way. Okay, 3 over this fraction is the same thing as 3 divided by this fraction. So this is 3 divided by x plus 4 over x plus 1. Now when you divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. I've heard some of my kids tell me that their middle school teachers taught them keep, change, flip, or copy, change, flip. Or when I was in school, they taught us to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to do the reciprocal, and I have x plus 1 over x plus 4. So when you divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Now, remember that when I multiply by 3, this 3 is just like having 3 over 1. So when you multiply, you do numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. And we're going to wind up doing the distributive property. So that's going to give me 3x plus 3 over x plus 4. So that is the answer. We will have domain restrictions. We have this denominator that can't be 0. You can do this one in your head. The domain is all real numbers except for negative 4. Okay, so that was number 18. How about number 20? I better go to a fresh page. Okay, so here comes number 20. H minus F. So H of X minus F of X. Okay h of x is negative 4 over x plus 3. So negative 4 over x plus 3 minus. Now f of x is 3x plus 2. I better put this in parentheses. 3x plus 2. When you have a negative sign in front of a binomial like this, you have to remember to distribute that. So, I will have negative 4 over x plus 3 minus 3x minus 2. You know what? I shouldn't have done that. Rewind. Changed my mind about my approach to the problem. I'm not going to distribute that minus sign yet. I'm going to leave that for later. Okay, sorry for the confusion. Let's do this instead. We need like denominators in order to uh, add and subtract. This has a denominator of x plus 3. That means this is going to need a denominator of x plus 3. I can't just write an x plus 3 down here like that without putting one in the top as well. 
So I needed to do that. But now the denominators are the same. So since the denominators are the same, I can put all this together into one giant fraction. Keeping the common denominator, I should scooch it over to make it more obvious. Okay, keeping the common denominator of x plus 3, I'm just putting all the numerators together. So negative 4 minus 3x plus 2 times x plus 3. I'm going to have to FOIL this, double distribute. So I'm going to have x plus 3, I've got my negative 4 minus now I'm going to double distribute this, so 3x times x is 3x squared. Um, 3x times uh, 3 is 9x. Now I'm going to do the 2. 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, that's going to give me so now I have negative 4 minus 3x squared plus 11x um, plus 6 over x plus 3 now, I need to take this minus sign and distribute it. So this will become negative 4 minus 3x squared minus 11x minus 6 all over x plus 3. So it's time to combine these like terms. So that's going to give us uh, let's see. We have negative three x squared and then negative eleven x, but then negative four and negative six make negative ten. Over x plus 3. So then we have to see if this will factor. Now before you can really factor this, there's a negative sign in the very front. And uh, we're going to have to treat that as a GCF. I'll go ahead and put negative 1 for right now to make it more clear. That's going to leave 3x squared plus 11x plus 10 over x plus 3. Now look at the trinomial and uh, see if you can factor it. Let's see, so I've got negative 1. It's probably going to be a binomial times a binomial. Okay, 3x squared, that's looking like 3x times x. Okay, 10. So it would factor like this. And normally I'd be looking here to see what might cancel. But actually, nothing actually cancels. So after all that work to factor it, nothing cancels. Which is sort of disappointing because that means since nothing canceled, then really this was the answer back here. Because uh, we really don't want any parentheses in our final answer. So this will be the final answer. 
and all we need is the domain. So the domain, of course, is all real numbers except negative 3. So that was kind of an ugly problem. Let's hope the next one is not so bad. Let's go to another paper. Um, let's see. Let's do number 20. I mean, uh, 22. Number 22, G over F. G of X over F of X. Okay, so that is 2X squared over 3X plus 2. We cannot cancel out anything. So, and there's nothing to factor, no GCF or anything. So that is the answer. So the domain is going to be all real numbers except negative 2 over 3. Again, how did I get the domain? Well, I knew that 3x plus 2 could not equal 0. I subtracted 2 from both sides, so 3x could not equal negative 2. I divided by 3 on both sides. So x could not equal negative 2 thirds. And that's where I got the domain from. All right, we finally arrived at the last problem, number 24. F at G at X. This is the last problem. So let's start with the outer function, F. And that is 3X plus 2. So instead of writing 3X plus 2, I write 3 parentheses plus 2. Then inside the parentheses, I put function g, which is 2x squared. There's very little I can do with this. The only thing I can do is multiply 3 times 2. So that's going to give me 6x squared plus 2. And that is the answer. And then the domain is all real numbers, or negative infinity to positive infinity. That's it. All done.